All right, so 13.3, we're going to split into two sections, and we're looking at the unit circle. The reason that it's called the unit circle is the radius is 1. If you notice from the center out to the edge, it is 1. Um, we've seen these angles before. We graphed this in a previous section. But now we're going to be adding sine and cosine to it. And this is the rule of thumb that you want to remember. That the x value and the y value are the same as the cosine value and the sine value. The way that I remember which one goes with which is that both of them are in alphabetical order. x comes before y and cosine comes before sine. So that's the way that I remember it. So the book and also on the test, they're going to ask you questions like this. And they don't want you to use calculator. They just want you to use the picture. So looking at this, they want to know what is the sine of pi over 2. Now remember, pi over 2 is, just, is an angle. Okay, It's in radians instead of degrees. Now typically we would just put this in the calculator and get an answer. But we're able to know what it is just by looking at the picture. Remember, sine is asking for the y value. So sine of pi over 2, which is at the top, what is the y value up there? 1. So that is your answer. Cosine of pi, you're looking at the x value at pi. So if you look over at pi, which is on the left, what's the x value there? Mm -hmm. And what's cosine of 3 pi over 2 going to be? Zero. That is the x value down there. Any questions? Now these angles are not always going to land on the x and y axes, and we're going to look at situations where they don't and figure out how to find those without using a calculator as well. So that's what today's lesson is all about. Are there questions on this, though? So if you take trig next year, you will live and breathe this unit circle right here and get very used to using it. All right, so if it is not on the x or y axes, we have to use what's called the reference angle. So I'm going to ask you on the test, as well as the homework today, to find reference angles. Now, a reference angle, in order to find it, we need to draw a vertical line to the x-axis. So you have an angle, and you're going to connect that angle back to the x-axis, never to the y-axis. This is the biggest mistake kids make. Because your triangle ends up being drawn in the incorrect location. So the reference angle is always positive and it's always less than 90. The reference angle is the angle to the x-axis. So it's however many degrees or radians, you can measure either way, it is to the x-axis. Okay, we ignore the direction that you're traveling. We always say it's a positive angle, and it's always going to be less than 90. <clears throat> so let's try finding the reference angle for these three angles. So we're going to draw a quick sketch and then figure out what that reference angle is. The reference angle is what we're going to be using with sine and cosine and tangent, so that's why we need to learn how to find it. So 150 degrees, if we graph that in standard position, it's going to start here and it's going to travel about to there, correct? 150 degrees? Now the reference angle, when we draw our triangle to create a right triangle, which direction do I have to draw? Straight down, okay? What you're doing is creating a right angle. 
The reference angle is how many degrees it is to the x-axis. So how many degrees is that? Mm -hmm. So the reference angle for 150 degrees is 30. Twenty-five would look like that. Remember that we draw a line connecting it to the x-axis. They're looking for this angle right here. How much is it? Mm-hmm. What would you put into your calculator to find this? Mm -hmm. Questions? Okay, pi over 3. Does anyone remember what this is in terms of degrees? If you look back at your unit circle. How many degrees is that? Yep. So that's the same thing as negative 60 degrees. We graph it. Draw our line to the x-axis. They want to know how big is that angle. 60 degrees. Remember that reference angles are never negative. So the reference angle is not exactly what it was originally, but it is 60 degrees. So we always draw a picture so we can make sure that we're drawing it in the right direction, making sure we're looking at the right angle. Questions on reference angle? Anyone still need this? All right, so we're going to have on the next page a bunch of triangles already drawn with the reference angle. And we're going to practice labeling the x value, the y value, and what's called the r value, which stands for radius. So this right here is something that you're going to need to know, because we're going to use it a lot. And it actually follows right along with what you already know. Cosine is what over what? What do we know cosine to be? Mm -hmm. Sine and tan. So it follows right along with those same rules, okay, based on this triangle right here. So if we have a triangle drawn on an xy graph, and we have 3, 4, and 5 on the sides of the triangle. This symbol right here is theta. It's a Greek letter. It's used in talking about angles with trigonometry quite often. So we're not solving anything. We're not finding sine or cosine right here. We're just getting used to what is the x value, what is the y value, and what is the r value. That's all we're doing. So looking at this triangle, which value, and by the way, the reason it's called a radius is because we're thinking of this as being a circle. What is the x value? Mm -hmm. The r value? What's the radius of the circle? Yep. And the y? 4. Now that we know those three, we could easily find sine, cosine, and tangent of that angle. We're not worrying about that quite yet. We're just getting the very basics down here, step by step. Okay, if you don't have the notes printed out, pick one of these two pictures to draw so that we don't wait for both of them. And I'll get the answers up for both. So pick one of the pictures. doesn't matter which one. Notice the direction that the triangle goes. You have to have your numbers reflect that positive or negative value. This is something that everyone needs to write down. A 
Oddly, x's and y's can be negative. The radius will never be a negative length. So if you drew this triangle, what should your x value be? Radius and y. This one. Negative 1. Make sure that those negative signs follow with you. Questions on that? Knowing which letter goes to which number? Just make sure you remember that the radius will never be negative. On the next slide, we're going to be reviewing a little bit from last year. In the middle of the year, we had a chapter on right triangles where we talked about 45, 45, 90 triangles and 30, 60, 90 triangles. And they had special things on the sides that always happened and always occurred this way. So I need you to copy down these two triangles because we are going to be using them a lot. And again, if you take trig next year, you're going to be using these a lot. So we learned this in Chapter 7, right in the middle of the winter last year. 45, 45, 90 is isosceles, so those two legs will be x. They're going to be the same length. And then 30, 60, 90, if you had me as a teacher, I called this the long leg, this one the short leg, and this one the hypotenuse. For our purposes, to make things simple, we're going to say that x is equal to 1. It'll keep the sides as simple as possible. So on all of our triangles that we draw, x is always equal to 1. So what I'm going to ask us to do is to draw three of these. So we get three xy graphs. We're going to graph each of these angles and label all three sides. We're going to draw the angles in standard form so that we are, aren't worrying about reference angles or anything like that. So a 30 degree angle would be drawn here. How would I draw the triangle? Straight down. Got 30 degrees right there. Now according to the triangle up at the top of the screen, what's always going to be on the long leg if x is 1? Yep, so this is going to be the square root of 3. How long is the short leg? 1. And how long is the hypotenuse? 2. Now we're at the point where we are at the last slide where we could label x, y, and r. We're not going to do that. We're just getting the triangles on here. So this will always happen. Long leg is always root 3. Short leg is 1. Hypotenuse is always 2. A 60 degree angle in standard position. We always draw our triangle to the x-axis. What's going to be on the x right here? Short leg is 1. This one's root 3. And then hypotenuse is 2. So once you have your angle drawn, you're easily able to fill in all three sides, which is what I want you to do on the test and today's homework. 45 degree angle. What goes on the legs? And on the hypotenuse? Square, Square root of 2. So we're going to put together everything we just looked at and finally be able to answer the questions that they're going to ask you on the test and on today's homework. Questions on how to label these sides at this point. All right, so I'm going to give you three angles, and we want to find the sine and cosine of all three angles. What's written in the left corner is review. You don't need to recopy it. That's just what we're kind of using as a reference. So we're going to start with negative 240. 
and I'll go through the steps on how to find this. So we're not using our calculator, and we're finding what the sine of 240, negative 240 and the cosine of negative 240 is going to be. First step is to graph. Negative 240. We're going to start by going down, because it's negative. Okay, we're going to spin around this way, and it's going to land about there. We have to draw our reference angle. And how big is that reference angle right there? Mm -hmm. So we have a 60 degree angle there because we went 60 degrees beyond 180. What are we going to label this bottom one with? The negative 1. Good, you remembered the negative because we went left. How about here? On the long leg. Positive or negative? I heard both. The y value is going up, right? So is that positive or negative? Positive. Okay, so positive root 3 and the radius is 2. So we have our triangle labeled. We just need to find sine of the angle and cosine of the angle without using a calculator. So you can remember the x over r, y over r, y over x, or you still use Sokotoa because it works either way. Just know that when you take trig, she's going to be referencing those, not the Sokotoa. So looking at sine, sine of this angle is going to be what over what? Which would be what? We're looking at this angle right here. Opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, we didn't use our calculator at all. What would cosine of that angle be? Now, if you took your calculator, which none of you have to take it out right now, but if you put cosine negative 240 in, you would get negative 0.5. So you were able to just find that by hand without using your calculator. Same thing here. If you put in sine of the angle, you're going to get a decimal. But if you take square root of 3 divided by 2, you get the same decimal. So this is finding these angles by hand. 270. That's straight down, isn't it? When it's not a triangle, we go back to the first page. 270 is right here, right? So we're using this idea right here. So we have cosine and sine. When we don't have a triangle, we're just looking at the x value and the y value. So what is the x value at 270 degrees? Zero. What is the, the y value? Negative one. Questions? One last one. One thirty-five. Right there, we draw our reference angle. How big is that reference angle? Forty-five degrees, which means we're using our forty-five, forty-five, ninety triangle. So, what are we going to label on the bottom? Negative one. Positive 1, square root of 2. So now we just have to answer sine of the angle and cosine of the angle. All right, cosine of the angle. And sine. 
What issue are we running into? Can't have square roots on the bottom. What do we multiply by? So our true answers should be There's the cosine of 140, 135. Sine of 135 is yep, positive root 2 over 2. Any questions?